Good morning and welcome to the channel. We're doing something a little bit different today. I've got my family with me. We're on the Isle of Mull and we're off to see if we can get some photographs of otters. Uh, we've been to the Isle of Mull many times before um, um, and managed to capture plenty of photographs of otters in the past. Um, so we're going to a couple of the spots uh, where we've been successful with otters in the past just to see if we can get some shots. Um, things are against us a little bit. We've got quite a heavy fog um, which means that visibility will be quite difficult but on the plus side it might give us something a little bit different than the photographs I've had in the past um, something like a photograph in, in a, in, in the, of an otter in the mist eating a fish something I've not achieved before um, also maybe something out on the water with the mist might look quite um, different a little bit ethereal look because it as we get a silhouette of the, of the otter on the water if it's calm enough and it's certainly not wind today so that's a possibility so I've got some ideas in my head of what we're going to achieve it's just going to be the hardest bit's going to be finding them um, if they're out on the water hunting and they are far enough out I, I would say anything over 10 meters we're going to be struggling um, but I've got my, my daughter with me and she is an expert otter spotter um, so hopefully we should find some otters and we'll be able to put them some pictures up on the video. And you have got your wife here, you know, who's an expert picnic maker. An expert picnic maker, yes, we've got some lovely sandwiches, I'll, I'll share those with you shortly. I'm going to explain to you now why Mull is so incredible. So we're driving down to the first location where we wanted to spot otters um, and we we found a big herd of red deer in the, in the field so we, we stopped to take some photographs of those. I'll put some pictures up um, just after this piece to camera. Um, then we drove a little bit further and we saw a female hen harrier fly right across the road in front of us and then was hunting at the field at the side. I've got a record shot of that, but it's it's nothing more than a record shot. I won't be putting that up. Um, but it was definitely a female hen harrier. Um, and then to the left of us, we've got another big herd of, of deer. So I'm just going to show you kind of the area that we're in at the moment and why this place is just so incredible. And the other amazing thing, not one person for miles around. Love it. Silent. So we're in the area where I've seen otters in the past and we're doing what I call the otter crawl. Um, and it's literally driving along at five mile an hour trying to get some photographs or trying to spot something. So we've had our first encounter with an otter. It's still about somewhere, um, quite close, quite close by, so I'll keep my voice down. Um, we could see two photographers following an otter along the bank further on. So we took a chance and just literally went down to the water's edge, lay down and waited for it to arrive to us. And luckily the, the photographers that were photographing it pushed it further up the lock towards us so it came right in front of us and then after um, a short space of time of hunting it caught quite a large crab 
which it couldn't handle in the water and it brought it out onto the land and that's that's the moments you're waiting for when you're photographing otter just those moments where um, it catches something that's a bit too big for it to handle in the water and um, as a result you end up with it um, you end up with it in in the bringing it out the out of the lock onto the land and, and so hopefully I've got some good shots which I'll put up onto the screen now for you to see um, it was a case of dashing out of the car and clambering down the water to the water's edge so I forgot to bring the pocket um, I did a little video on my phone but it'll be it won't be any decent um, so hopefully ah, I can see it again I can see it again so hopefully I might be able to just follow it I've got the pocket with me this time and maybe get some video It's just in the water in front of me. It's just caught a fish, it's eating it on the surface. And it's back under. So it's a case of it diving maybe 15 to, 15 to 20 seconds, but at the moment it's quite shallow where it's diving, so it's only down for seconds. And then maneuvering it in a position where you think it's gonna surface for the shot. Um, I'll see if I can get some video. Just like that, they disappear. He's gone around the, the headland now, I can't follow. <laughs> Not unless I had some serious waders on. Um, but I've definitely got some photographs that I'll pop on screen for you to see now. Hope you enjoy them, as much as I did. I'm a firm believer that to be good at wildlife photography is not about getting the photographs. It's about getting close enough to animals to get a photograph and then leave without the animal realising you've ever been there. At times I was probably, I think probably about 10 metres from this otter. Um, the one that I photographed in October was much more confident and, and uh, you know, wasn't, wasn't that worried about its surroundings. This one was on a real high state of alert and very, very aware of, of its surroundings. So I kept my distance. And as a result of that, I've got some good shots and then I've backed away without the, the otter realising that I was there. And for me, and each to their own, I know some people do things different, that's good photography. That's respecting the animal that you photograph, getting the photographs that you need, using a big lens so you can keep your distance and then backing away and just leaving it in peace. So we stopped for a, a little bit of lunch, <clears throat> just got in the car. Set off only about five minutes and found what I think was a female otter. Um, got myself into the perfect position, apart from one thing. I was upwind of her and she smelt me. She, you, I've got some photographs of her sniff in the air and she knew I was there but she couldn't see me. I have my neck scarf pulled up right to my eyes and my hat down. She couldn't see me, but she knew I was there. She could definitely smell me. So in the end, she did what otters do best and they just vanished. She just appeared out in the water, in the deep water. So I'll sit and watch her for a little bit and see if anything else happens. And I'll put up on the screen some videos, uh, some stills of her sniff in the air. We just finished with the otter um, and we were driving down and there was a buzzard on a tree at the side. Now usually the minute you point your camera in their direction they're off, they fly away. This one didn't. Um, so I crept from behind the trees into a bit of a clearing where I could get some shots of it um, and it was looking straight at me so I knew it had seen me. 
um, and at that point I thought there might be something wrong so I crept um, closer still and took some photographs and it appeared to be holding its leg out so I think it was probably injured so not wanting to cause it any more stress and getting any closer than it already was I just backed away and moved away and left it left it be because um, it's very unusual you can get that close to a buzzard but I'll put the photograph up on the screen and you can have a look at it finally back at the cottage after a fantastic day we've seen loads photographed loads uh, any that I've not mentioned previously that I've been doing pieces to camera I'll put onto the video now so I've just lit a fire um, about to have a glass of wine and enjoy the evening <laughs> I've got my bath running and enjoy the evening so until next time goodbye <laughs>